So um, today, obviously, um, I can I can talk for, for hours about diet and diabetes and, and, and giving you lots of tips, but obviously I'm only um, down for half an hour. So the um, initially I'm going to just to go, just to go through some sort of key highlights about uh, health, um, healthy messages for people with diabetes. Um, and then I'm going to share um, hopefully at least one of the recipes that I've helped produce from your healthy kitchen. So one of the key important facts I wanted to mention, first of all, is it's important to eat regular meals. OK, it's this, this must consist of three main meals. And I, um, some people perhaps have snacks in between, depending on the type of diabetes they have as well. Now, the, it's, in, it's important to incorporate at least five pieces of fruit and vegetables in our diet. I'm sure you've heard the message that we were saying about five a day and the importance of having five pieces of fruit and vegetables a day. I wanted to just explain a little bit about the portions because I know there's always questions about this. And when we talk about a um, fr fruit in particular, it's basically mm -hmm. whatever fits into the palm of your hands. So like one apple or a banana or a pear, about um, two tangerines would be a portion, even a small bowl of salad, perhaps a small handful of dried fruit. So if you like dried apricots, raisins, sultanas, all those will be one of your portions of five a day. It also includes things like vegetables. So three mm -hmm. tablespoons of any type of vegetable would count as part of your five a day. And I think it's so important that we all, whether we have diabetes or not, it's important to get a good balance of fruits and vegetables in our diet, as they have a lot of protective benefits for our, for our health and for our heart. Um, another key message is to reduce saturated fat in the diet. So these are things that you would know probably like ghee and butter and fried food are in particular the ones that are gonna be much, much more higher in saturated fat. Um, and by using less oil, or by swapping to, for example, a vegetable-based oil, like rapeseed oil or olive oil, those types of vegetable-based oils will have lots more benefits, make your um, heart more stronger, and obviously, um, and also help to um, reduce, to, to, you know, to help with your cholesterol. But at the same time, it's the amount of oil that we use, whichever oil we're using, it's the amount we use. And I'm sure many of us are used to pouring the, the, the gallon into the pan and, and when we're making our curries and things we pour it in it's very important to try and measure out how much oil we we use in the pans so ideally we try and say one tablespoon of oil for a family of four now to you that might not sound like a lot um but it also depends on what you're what you'll be cooking what you're frying off so if you're just doing a little bit of like a vagar where you're frying off some cumin seeds and poppy seeds you don't actually need a lot of oil if you are going to be cooking off some fried off some onions, one of the good tips I say is to make sure the temperature's sort of low to medium, that um, you're not putting, you know, you're not you're using a non-stick pan, for example. Those sorts of basic messages that will help make sure that the onions don't burn, and that, that in turn means you don't end up adding more oil into the pan. Another thing to mention is about salt. We always mention, we always talk about, you know, we, lots of people have, um, our taste buds are very different for salt. So you'll find that when you go to a family's house maybe and they're having a meal that's with, with salt in it, you might find it's too salty. Or you might think actually there's enough, not enough salt in there and I want to add more. So it's really important to try and get the right balance when it comes to salt. And to remember that the reason why we're trying to reduce the amount of salt in a diet is to help control our blood pressure, okay? And that's one of the key risks along with having diabetes that we need to manage as well. So trying to use less salt by perhaps alternative things like lemon juice, that's a good tip to try and add, instead of adding more salt into a curry, perhaps we'd use fresh lemon juice or bottled lemon juice to, to replace the flavor there. The other thing I suggest is things like coriander. Fresh coriander always flavors food much better. And um, spices, different types of spices help to flavor the food as well. So it's just trying to get our bodies and our taste buds adjusted to having a bit less salt, but by adding other, other more flavorsome some spices as well in to make it take the food taste better. You'll see that in my video in a little while as well, what, what, what I've done there. The other thing I'd like to mention is about getting a, having balanced meals. So what I mean by this is following the Eat Well Guide, which is a, a template that we use where it's a, it's a plate 
and it's portioned out to show the types of portions of the food groups that we should be eating. And, it, and it's basically highlighting that a third of our plate should be full of plenty of vegetables or fruit in, in, in our meal, more likely to be vegetables, obviously, if it's like a main meal. So for example, if you're having a dal and you're having um, some chapatis or rice with that, incorporating your vegetables in. So whether you're adding vegetables into the dal or you're having a side salad, always try and remember to incorporate some type of vegetables or salads into your main meals. That way you're getting at least one or two of your five a day. The other good tip is perhaps adding things like green, you know, making sure we have some green vegetables. Now being Asian, I, my, my children love dindora, which is, um, yeah, we call them um, the green dindora. Um, there's lady fingers like binda, there's gua, there's bosho, there's all these different types of green vegetables that have got lots of benefits for us. And I think that's one good thing about our Asian culture that we, you know, most people, and there's so much more variety of green vegetables available that we have to make sure we eat in them regular. So if you're having like a dal or a mug curry, try and have some vegetables added in there. Try and have those green vegetables as well, as well as your chapatis or your rice along with the meal. One of the things I'm gonna to share today is I've made some rice and chapati today <laughs> as part of my, my evening meal as well. And I wanted to share with you what a portion is, because I know that's always a key, key um, topic, isn't it? That always people want to know how much a, a portion of rice and chapati is. So to give you a guide, we're aiming for about two handfuls. So I know everyone's hands are different, but certainly it's trying to get a rough guide of about two handfuls of uncooked rice is what you perhaps will soak in some water before you before you cook it. And it's mentioning just, just to say that it's two handfuls per person. So this bowl here, which I'm hoping you can kind of see, is about two handfuls of um, plain boiled rice, okay? Um, and that will be part of a meal perhaps where you're having some, some curry or some dal with the meal as well. Having said that, if you're going to be having chapatis as well, because again, traditionally, a lot of South Asian, a lot of Indians like to have some chapati, some rotli and some rice and some uh, curry as well. So it's it's knowing what is a portion of chapati. Now, if any, if you're anything like me and then I've got my mother-in-law and I've got my mum, we all make chapati slightly different. We all have different sizes, different thickness. So that will obviously orientate as well how many chapatis you eat. But to give you a rough idea, I mean, again, that's like my hand there and, and that's just showing you that it's like one chapati that fits into sort of my palm of my hand okay um i would probably say about two of these is a portion some of you might think wow that's not not very much at all but again it does depend on the thickness and also it depends on what you're adding in there are you adding oil into the dough are you adding ghee or some sort of fat on top once the chapatis are made that will all increase the total fat intake so they could be a lot more healthier if we were using less oil. I know you might be thinking, well, how can you make chapati soft if you're not adding oil into the dough? One of my videos, which I don't think I'll get time to show today, is showing how you make um, chapatis with no oil in the dough, just really boiling hot water um, and, and using the right flour, and it can be nice and soft and fluffy. Okay. So I'm just going to move on to talk a little bit about um, like Asian sweets. So it's just highlighting the things like Asian sweets is quite popular, okay? And obviously a lot of Asian families like to eat mitai, things like gulab jambu, jalebi, barfi, um, you know, and <laughs> I think we can say some people might eat them more, more regular than others. But as you know, there are two main ingredients in, in Asian, a Asian sweets. So you've got your ghee and your sugar. They're the two things that obviously, as you would know, that whether you have diabetes or not, we have to be a lot more careful of how much we have. Ghee is going to be very high in saturated fat and the amount of sugar that goes in these mitais will be very, very high. And that can have a very big impact on your blood sugars for your diabetes. So how do we get around this? It's very difficult to know um, what alternatives there are. And I'm afraid unless you're making the mitai yourselves at home, where you're using um, different types of spreads or you're using low fat milk, you're perhaps adding less sugar or you're using sweeteners, artificial sweeteners into the mitai, that could possibly work. 
but just to give you an idea, an average mitai has anything from about 200 to 400 calories a piece. So I'm not sure if calories, uh, if you have if, what calories mean to you, but certainly to put that into more perspective, to give you an idea, about um, 200 calories to 400 calories is similar to two pieces of toast, two wholemeal pieces of toast with beans. So it's like having a, a, a beans on toast for a meal. That is exactly the same as having one piece of mitai. So which one's going to fill you up? Obviously, the beans on toast is, isn't it? So yeah, we, it's just to make sure you highlight that there are the, that the mitai is full of a lot more fat and sugar, um, and it won't be as filling as the beans on toast. Now Diwali is coming up, and I know we all like to treat ourselves, and we get um, we get both we get sweet treats for, for as presents and gifts as well. And it's important because it's a family time. It's a time to share food with family. I completely understand this year. I'm sure it'd be quite different. But saying that, it's important to remember that around celebration times, we end up doubling or tripling our calorie intake if we're not careful with what we eat. So it's trying to be more aware of what we eat and how much we be eating during this festival time. So it's the quantity of the food. And just remember to watch for those portions. So only eat if you feel you're hungry. OK, when you're getting together, with, when you're with family and you're used to having regular meals, don't feel just because it's Diwali, you've got to eat those foods. You should always try and remember you eat when you're hungry, because that's one of the things we sometimes forget as well when it's celebrations and, and special occasions. I'm going to end this part of the talk by just giving you some, some snack ideas, because I know that's sometimes quite popular. And some of the snacks that I like to recommend are things like plain popcorn plain popcorn or popcorn that's spiced up with some flavors some cumin powder chili powder um turmeric whatever sort of spices you like to eat even a bit of cinnamon perhaps just to make it a slightly different flavor all those flavored popcorns are a lot more healthier than um other high fat and high sugar snacks there's other things like dry roasted nuts okay so obviously if you just pop the nuts into the oven we don't even need to add any oil just a bit of flavour in them, and they actually taste fantastic, just plain on its own. There's also things like dry roasted chickpeas. So jana, jana lida, jana, those types of things that we can cook off, and then we can put them in the oven and roast them through with a bit of flavouring, even if it's just a bit of lemon and salt and pepper. Um, sorry, not too much salt, obviously, but just even a bit of spice and pepper and things like that, just to give it a bit of flavour. And that's quite nice as a snack. The other thing is um, poppadoms. OK, so, you know, the plain dry, but, you know, if you dry baking poppadoms on the cooker or in the microwave, just as a little snack, these sorts of things are better than just perhaps going for the, um, the savoury things like gelro and gatia or biscuits that we tend to have as well. Now, talking about gelro, that's what I'm going to go on to next, because I want to share with you a recipe that I'll be showing you shortly. And that's the, um, the gelro recipe. Gelro I've made today. OK, again, it's one I can show you. Um, this is if you can see it, this is made with um, breakfast cereals. So this jello is um, a healthy recipe with cornflakes, mm -hmm. rice, puffs, puffed rice, bran flakes and shredded wheat. And all these are just mixed together. You can put them in the oven just to dry roast them. But these have been mixed together with some spices like turmeric and chili powder. And then what I've done is I've also dry roasted some peanuts. As you know, peanuts go quite well into a jello. So I've dry roasted those and I've also um, dry roasted dana, dana coriander in the oven. Just fantastic. You don't have to fry the dana. I've just popped them in the oven for five, ten minutes to just give them that little crunch, crunchy texture. I've added all that into the general mix. And then the final thing that's really important for general, as you know, is the vagar, where you're adding all the spices in, the cumin and the poppy seeds and everything. So in a pan of um, oil, in, 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 a, in, some, in a pan, I basically just cook off some... Um, cumin seeds and poppy seeds and black mustard seeds and I pour that vagar on top of the jello. So what I'd like to um, actually just to share with you today is, is the, um, the jello recipe that we've got uh, as a video that I'd like to just show you what I've been doing. And this video is part of the, the website called Your Healthy Kitchen. So if you get a few moments, I'd like you to go on that website and have a look at the other uh, four recipes that I've created. This is just a start. There's some curries and there's chapatis on there, which I show how to make without any oil as well. That I'd like mm -hmm. to just show you some healthy tips. 
So I'm just going to um, oh, oh. I'm just going to share with you the the video, um, which I'll show you screen, and I will share you with my first video. No, right, let's just try it again. I think I pressed the wrong button. There we go. Okay, I hope you can see this. Hello and welcome to Your Healthy Kitchen. I'm Jessica Masuria, an NHS dietitian based in Leicester. I'm here to show you how to cook great traditional food with all the flavour you know and love, but with a healthier twist. Today we are cooking roasted jedderol. Preheat the oven to gas mark 6, 200 degrees Celsius and roast the peanuts and sultanas and in a separate oven dish roast the fresh coriander. Cook these for 10 minutes. Once the coriander has cooled, crumble it up with your fingers. In a large bowl, mix the cornflakes, puffed rice, bran flakes and shredded wheat. Add the turmeric and red chilli powder and mix well. Add the roasted peanuts, sultanas and dry coriander to the cereal mixture and mix. Heat the oil in a pan, add the cumin seeds, mustard seeds, curry leaves and sesame seeds. When the seeds start to pop, add the asafoetida, also known as hing, and mix. Add this into the large bowl of cereal mixture and mix well before serving. For extra variety, the roasted jevro can be served with tomatoes, onions and a squeeze of lemon. I've updated the traditional way of cooking this recipe by making some simple changes. Some of the health benefits in this jerro is it's baked, not fried, as we're using breakfast cereals for the base. Breakfast cereals are fortified with vitamins. Some are high in fibre. To get this recipe and extra tips, as well as more from Your Healthy Kitchen, please visit www.yourhealthykitchen.co.uk.